what are the origins of theoretical computer science out of mathematics how did it how did it originate and what do what does a theoretical computer scientist work on so first of all i think historically theoretical computer science precedes computer science because the first idea about computational devices came out of theory so about more than 100 years ago some questions were asked about the nature of proving things you know so when you write a proof if you have done kind of geometry proofs in school you start with some axiom and you say because of this this follows because of this this follows so in a sense if you know which rule to follow then the fact you are trying to prove becomes a, a mechanical process in some sense of assembling the right steps so that you reach the target that you need so the question abstractly was that is every statement a logical statement about mathematics provable in such a way is there a kind of automatic way where you can actually churn out a proof and uh, this required you to understand what is it mean to have an autom- what is it, what is this process right the process of mechanical computation how do you characterize it and this led to the idea of what could be a computing device and this is what we attribute to famous people like alan turing and alonzo church roughly about 90 years ago mid 30s early 30s they came up with these ideas about what constitutes a kind of mechanical computation and the surprising thing that they showed is that there are problems which you can state quite naturally including the original problem about all statements in a kind of logical language which cannot be computed so that is the most surprising thing that we came up with that there are many things that which you would like to compute which we cannot compute mm. but out of turing's uh, model of computation a kind of a mathematical model of computation came what is essentially the architecture of the computer that we use today so the idea today is that we have this memory and we have this uh, instructions and then they execute the instructions but the instructions also sit in the memory so there is no distinction between where your program is stored in your computer and where your data is stored in the, it's only one place this is all actually a man- physical manifestation of the theoretical computer science ideas of turing in particular about how computation works but more recently after maybe 1960s people started looking at other aspects and in particular one of the questions was efficiency you know so you not only do you want to do things automatically but how fast can you do them can you do thing so one thing is if i can demonstrate that something is fast i can try to explain how fast it is but are there problems which you cannot do fast like are there problems which intrinsically require you to look at a large number of possibilities for and there are many such problems which historically have been there like scheduling you know if you want to find an or resource i mean it related to that resource allocation so if you are for example an airline and you have crew and you have to fly them all over the place and they have to take shifts how do you best allocate your staff to your aircraft so that you minimize the amount of unnecessary time that people are flying around and so on so these are all you could do it by trial and error and now the question is can you do better right similar problem could be that if you are shifting your house and then you have to put all your furniture in a truck and you want to figure out whether it will fit in one truck load or you need two truck loads so what is the minimum number of truck loads given that you cannot take your bed apart into small pieces yeah. right? so you have to put in as a whole so these are all problems which are of practical importance and computationally it's not clear that there are good solutions to this so this idea of algorithms efficiency complexity this has been one of the driving questions in the last 50 60 years and it has become now old enough that it's become a kind of classical problem in computer science itself to understand this interplay between the resources that you have and the problems that you can solve and the other part which which is my research interest is that now you build more and more complicated computing systems you need to validate that they are doing what they are supposed to be doing so you come into this so this is one of the original problems that turing showed cannot be done you cannot take a program and write another program which will check that it's correct so you want to ask i you have written so you are a teacher a student submits a program you want to know whether that program will work correctly on the so you say they have written a program to calculate factorial or something like that in general you cannot tell whether it will work right across all programs so now but if i build a system i need to validate it so how would you validate given that there is this bottleneck how do you do this so it's like an engineering extension but the engineering objects are not physical objects but software objects so i set up a 
telecom network or I set up an automated signaling system or I set up something which is, for example, of current relevance today, which is for software, which is flying a plane. How do I make sure that it is doing the right thing? Right? So that is one aspect of uh, theoretical computer science. These are all, you know, ideas in mathematics, but very grounded in, in a real opportunities for, for, you know, for adding value to society. 